Hello, and welcome to the Jenkins Documentation Office Hours. Today is January 25th, and today, and this is the EU-US edition. Uh, around the table currently, we have Mark Waite, Bruno Verachten, Chris Stern, and myself, Kevin Martins. If anyone joins, we'll welcome, as always. And for now, we'll go over the agenda. So uh, we've got the Jenkins Contributor Summit at Boston next Friday. Uh, <clears throat> Jenkins was announced as a winner of a DevOps Dozen Award, so we'll note that. Really exciting about that. And uh, yeah, just it's great to celebrate Jenkins in any way we can. Uh, contributor spotlight updates, a couple new blog posts that were, post that were published today. Uh, the LTS and weekly release yesterday, Google Summer of Code prep, uh, the Maven and Python tutorial revamps, uh, version documentation for Jenkins.io, the sponsor attribution page, uh, and I wanted to highlight the related pages in 404 issue that's been getting uh, some, some traction lately and work done. Uh, upgrading the Jenkins section, which is what we started talking about last week, and a housekeeping note regarding office hours next week. Is there anything that we want to add to the agenda or anything else that we should note here? Or if not, we'll get started. Yeah, nothing else from me. Okay. Thank you very much. So... Uh, first on the agenda, again, Jenkins Contributor Summit is next Friday, February 2nd, the day before FOS, the FOSDEM conference starts. Uh, we're going to be there, uh, uh, like I think all of the officers now are going. We found out Tim Jacome is going to be there. Uh, so we have all the Jenkins officers will be there, four out of the five board members. Um, we've got more than 20 people confirmed to attend this Contributor Summit. This is shaping up to be amazing. Yeah, actually, it's even better than that now, Kevin. John Mark, John Mark disclosed that the room is full. That means wow. there are 30 scheduled confirmed attendees. So, so we're now at 30 attendees planned for this, this event. Yep. Wow. That's amazing. So that's fantastic to hear. I'm really looking forward to everything that's going to happen. Um, Jean Marc also posted the finalized agenda on the community site, so that you have an idea of what the schedule is going to look like for the contributor summit. So presentations, lunch break, discussions, and things afterwards, uh, and then celebratory dinner. Um, check the community post for real detailed information and to get a better idea of that. Uh, Jean Marc's also posted a couple blog posts that we've got linked here uh, regarding FOSDEM. So lots of great information out there. Uh, and yeah, really looking forward to it. Re I'm really excited just to be able to meet everyone and yeah, share the love. Uh, next up on the agenda. So uh, the DevOps Dozen is a uh, awards that they uh, they do every year. Uh, this past, for 2023, Jenkins was awarded the most innovative DevOps open source project. So uh, thanks to everyone for all their work. I mean, uh, this is a result of all the work that happens throughout the community, throughout the Jenkins project. So it's every single person that touches it. Um, and thanks to Alyssa and uh, the other folks that helped make the award happen and get us uh, nominated for that. Uh, it, there is some organizational stuff that goes on in the background that we absolutely need. So um, thanks to everyone involved in, in this. Uh, it's great to celebrate Jenkins in another way this year. So fantastic. Uh, Mark, anything else on the award? Uh, or am I forgetting anything about the award? Well, so we're going to we're going to use the opportunity of the of contributor summit to take a photograph of the thirty people or so that will be attending, and our intention then is to overlay an image of the DevOps dozen trophy when it's shipped to us with that picture, so that we can highlight that the reason it's an innovative DevOps open source project is because of people like this group of thirty that are that we're meeting. Now, admittedly, we can't get everybody, but showing that it's this is not a one or a two people thing, that this is a, an entire community that created this. So That's yeah, really looking cool. forward to it. And so we will we'll take pictures. We're gonna have a lot of fun at the Contributor Summit and we'll use some of those pictures to highlight this DevOps Dozen Award. Amazing, great. Thank you so much, Mark. And uh, yeah, and just like, um, Previous years, post FOSDEM, we'll have a recap sharing insights from everyone that was there um, and just recapping FOSDEM as a whole and the Contributor Summit. So uh, to, to be, to be uh, more to come on that. Uh, in terms of the Contributor Spotlight, so we just published Uli Hafner's Spotlight on Tuesday. Um, that was uh, done off 
scheduled by one day just because uh, we had the LTS and weekly release yesterday, which ended up being security releases. We wanted to make sure that Uli's spotlight did not get lost in all of that. So we wanted to publish a day early. Uh, everything else will be back on schedule as normal going forward. Uh, and next up will actually be Valentin Delay. Uh, so uh, their spotlight will be published on February 7th. And, um, and then we've also got the next couple months planned out on top of that. So we've got plenty of content to come. Um, and just, uh, I want to say thank you again to all of the contributors that have uh, been working with me on this. This has been really great to uh, not only meet and learn about you, but also be give, uh, get the chance to um, appreciate and share all of that with the rest of the world. It's, uh, this work should not go unnoticed, and uh, it's great to be able to just share that and highlight these folks that deserve it. Yeah, special thanks to Valentin. Valentin was attending our Google Summer of Code intro that preceded this. And Valentin has, uh, is planning to attend FOSDEM and will be at the Contributor Summit. So thanks, Valentin. And we see that the same thing. Uli Hoffner will see, get to see him face-to-face -face at the Contributor Summit, along with Alex Brandis and, and several others. We won't see Alex Earl face-to-face, -face, and I don't think we'll see Chris Stern. Sorry, Chris, that, that Belgium is not on your trip plans for next week. No worries. Yeah, no, it's going to be really exciting. I'm really uh, jazzed up about meeting all the contributors and, and like all these folks that we've been working with and I've been uh, partnering with on this to, to, yeah, be in person is going to be great. Uh, next up, so a couple of new blog posts that we published again today. Uh, so first up, um, do it out of order, 2023 recap. Uh, thanks to all of the SIG leaders and officers, everyone that contributed to that, everyone that's put in the work that we could recap for the year. Uh, and uh, Alyssa, Bruno, putting the recap together, uh, thank you very, very much. Um, it's great to see all of the wonderful accomplishments that we had over 2023. There's a lot of content there. Definitely check it out when you have some time. Uh, and look at, just uh, so it happens to be the award again. Look at that. Uh, and we'll have a separate blog post regarding the award and, and some background as to that uh, soon, Pro most likely uh, after FOSDEM. But if we can get it published before then, we'll get it published. But um, no, nothing concrete there yet. Uh, and then the other blog post that I wanted to highlight is a blog post from uh, Sonar, which is uh, they are uh, noticed a vulnerability within Jenkins and we're able to detect and partner with the Jenkins security team to resolve it. Um, this vulnerability was found, uh, this was something that was part of the security release that came out yesterday for both uh, LTS and weekly. So we wanna make sure that this is published so that uh, we have as much insight and we can share all that information to the community. Um, so uh, real quick, uh, Sonar, helps clean up code, make sure that everything looks good. Uh, they had a really high praise for Jenkins in terms of uh, the code setup, the quality of code, and uh, just structure around Jenkins. Found a vulnerability that could lead to some issues, detected it, alerted Jenkins security, and they worked together, collaborated on resolving the issue, uh, making sure that this uh, loophole, or not loophole, but uh, that this hole is covered up and not accessible anymore so that nothing dangerous could be happening. Uh, and yeah, like I said, they released it. Uh, this was part of the security release yesterday for the LTS and weekly release. So um, this is uh, included within all that. Um, and I just wanna say thank you very much to uh, the Jenkins security team and the Sonar team, uh, Yaniv specifically, since he was able to write up the blog post uh, and provide us that. So um, great to see, really lovely to see the collaboration. And uh, it, it's always a win when we have security uh, security victories for Jenkins. So really, really excited to see all of that. Um, on that note, uh, I just want to ask if there's anything I might have missed or not uh, included about the Sonar uh, blog post. Uh, Mark, if you might know anything else about it, or that's pretty much everything. Well, I've got more research to do because I'm doing a what's new in Jenkins 2.426.3 later today, and it'll be a key highlight. Thankfully, Darren Pope's really smart about these things, so he's he's there to help. Great. And uh, yeah, and for anyone um, unfamiliar, uh, whenever there's an LTS release, Mark and Darren do a live stream talking about what's new. So that'll be today, like you said. Thank you very much. Uh, and again, on that note,
So LTS 2.426.3 and weekly 2.442 were both released yesterday. Uh, again, this was a security release. So thanks to the Jenkins security team for handling the release and change logs. Uh, and uh, as far as the next LTS goes, um, so right now the baseline is looking like it's gonna be uh, 2.440.1 is gonna be the next LTS uh, release. So really looking forward to that, excited about uh, all the changes and everything that's gonna be happening there. Uh, I will be working on the change log and upgrade guide in the upcoming couple weeks to make sure we have that ready to go. Uh, Fossum will be taking up a good chunk of time over the next week or so, but uh, we have some time before that will be released. So everything will be taken care of way prior to the LTS. Uh, next up on the agenda, so Google Summer of Code 2024 prep is ongoing. Uh, and we actually just had uh, right before this, the uh, contributor roundup. So uh, anyone interested in participating in Google Summer of Code 2024 with Jenkins is uh, invited to attend. And um, yeah, I just, it just finished up uh, as Mark stated, Valentin's there, Valentin's there. Uh, Chris's organization uh, or the, uh, or, I forget what the actual title is, but Chris's uh, org admin, that's what, that's what it is uh, for summer code this year. So really, really excited to have Chris on board and, to, and like leading the way on that. Um, just overall, really excited. We've got a lot of Gitter activity, people talking about it, offering, uh, reassurance, offering uh, any any kind of advice, any kind of insights they can. Um, Chris or Bruno, would you wanna share any insights about the contributor roundup or the, the meeting that just finished up? Um, I, think, I think Bruno went, so uh, I, I was there, Mark was there too. And uh, we had an hour long discussion about how to best prepare for GSOG applications as a contributor. And um, I think we got we got more than 20 questions during the Q&A session, which was a very good sign. And I I think like at some point we had more than 20 people showing up to attend besides the four panelists. So um, we had quite a good turnout. Oh, it's awesome. That's fantastic to hear. Uh, that's that's a lot of folks, um, all things considered. So that's great. Uh, kudos to you, Chris, and uh, everyone that's part of the Google Summer of Code team. Like this is that's fantastic news. Um, so thank you very much. Uh, next up on the agenda, so uh, something that we've been discussing the last couple of weeks that we got now fully uh, taken care of. The Maven and Python tutorial revamps have both now been merged. Uh, so you can see with both the Maven. Uh, and Python tutorials, they now have instructions for using Docker Compose. Um, so this is, again, the result of one of the Google Summer of Code 2023 projects. And uh, thanks, huge, huge, huge thanks to Bruno Brockton for uh, implementing that and getting the integrated into the tutorials. Um, everything's great, everything looks good, really straightforward, much, much easier to use and navigate and work with compared to the uh, more complicated manual Docker instructions. So uh, just fantastic all around over there. Um, yeah, uh, Bruno, do you want to share anything about that or have any notes, comments about uh, it? Well, uh, thanks a lot to um, Damien and uh, Mark for the idea uh, to begin with. I think that it was their idea to start with these tutorials. And we still have a long way to go. And we want to simplify the rest of the Docker instruction when it comes to Jenkins. So how to install Jenkins on top of Docker, for example, that's our main target, but we still have a few tutorials to work with. The one I'm working on these days is a Node tutorial. Um, it follows uh, the same pattern, more or less. So it should uh, be that difficult to finish, uh, even if I don't know much about Node. <laughs> yes, there are still a lot of things to do when it comes to these tutorials, but we are progressing. That's a good thing. And thanks for pointing out that this was uh, the result, the follow-up to uh, 2023 GSOC project and all started with uh, Ashutosh Saxina, uh, Leo Berviento, and Jean-Marc Messen, of course. Thanks a lot to all of them who were implied in that project. Great, thank you very much, Bruno. Yeah, it's uh, it's really great to see. It's amazing to see the full progress and process of Google Summer of Code kind of like working its way through and then completing. It's 
yeah, all of this is just fantastic. Thank you again. And uh, something that um, I've been talking about with Mark actually is potentially working on the Docker installation instructions, uh, mm. having you show me the ropes a little bit so, so that I can do that. Uh, yeah, it's 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 cool. I'm really interested in it, and the Docker installation instructions are uh, someplace that I've been in a lot. So, yeah, I'd like to see them improve. <laughs> Good luck with that. Um, yes, count me in if you need any help with that. I'd be happy to participate. Yeah, yeah, and we'll we'll talk more later on and figure that out. But yeah, it's great to see you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Uh, next up, so uh, another Google Summer of Code 2023 project that we're uh, getting ready to yeah, get to the finish line and pu publish. Um, so the version documentation for Jenkins.io, this was born out of the looking for alternative build tools for Jenkins.io uh, that uh, Chris and Van Diet have been working on and for since Google Summer of Code, now beyond. Uh, everything is looking really great there. There's uh, It's set up in the infra. Uh, the Jenkins infrastructure. So we've got uh, not, not yet, or, or sorry, for clarity. Yes. Or, or Kevin, do you want to talk further? Are you okay if I give current status? Yeah, go ahead. Go right ahead, Mark. Sorry to interrupt. It just, Erva, in infra team meeting on Tuesday, we were discussing it and realized we've got challenges with our Azure costs for the January, February, March, where we're over our cost amounts. Because we're over cost, we've had to delay some projects. And one of the things we've delayed is this deployment of docs.jenkins.io. Chris, I apologize for doing that, but we've got to keep ourselves as close to budget as we can on our cloud expenses. And that meant Damien and Hervé and Stefan had to switch focus to, to do some cost savings. Now, one of the cost savings was successful already today. CI.Jenkins.io has moved. It moved from one piece of Azure to another piece of Azure. Uh, and users don't see any difference. And that's a really good thing, right? But what they, what they just did with that is will save us an estimate of $500 a month by having made that change because now we'll use donated Microsoft money to, to run that machine instead of using money that CDF has to pay. So, so, but there are still several more changes like that that we've got to do in order to bring our costs down to where they need to be. So I apologize, Chris, we're gonna be, we're gonna be delayed. Uh, I'm not sure if it will be, I suspect we'll resume after FOSDEM. So early February before we take a look at it. Go ahead, Chris, you had unmuted. Okay, we should be fine. Great, thanks. Sorry, sorry for the bad news, but thank you for your patience. No worries. Thank you very back, much, Mark. Back Appreciate to you, Kevin. That. Yeah, no, and thank you for clarifying all that, Mark. Um, I think I might have missed that one or uh, that didn't register in my, my brain for some reason. So that's good. Yeah, that's great to know. Thank you very much for that. Um, on that note, I had I have been going through the version doc site, reviewing uh, things like navigation, pages, content, et cetera. So I've been raising issues as I've come up against them. Um, and both Fondi and Chris have been resolving those issues really quickly, really easily, um, and re really well. Uh, there was, I think I submitted like five or six issues the other day, and they all got taken care of with one uh, fell swoop. So um, just really fantastic work. Thank you very, very much to Fondi and Chris for all your work on that. You're welcome. Uh, next up on the agenda, so the uh, sponsor attribution page. So this is, again, something we've been discussing for some time. Um, essentially, JFrog asked if we could uh, attribute them in the downloads page, make sure that they're recognized as a sponsor, which, of course, um, that led to a larger conversation about, well, we should make sure we have sponsors. Uh, everyone attributed as the correct sponsorship. Um, right now, we have a list of sponsors at the, bo at the bottom of the root page, which uh, we also removed Red Hat from recently because they are no longer part of the CD the Linux Foundation, no, and no, therefore no, no. are not a or part sorry, of the, the CD time. Foundation. They're they're probably still part of Linux Foundation. That they just didn't they just left exited CDF. Okay, sorry. Thank you, Mark. Um, so yeah, so the they are not part of the CD Foundation anymore, and therefore are not a sponsor of Jenkins. Um, so they've been removed from there. But uh, the bigger 
point of the attributions and the sponsors is that um, Basil Crows has gone and created a sponsors page draft so that we have an idea of um, what it might look like, what kind of levels we'll have. Uh, this has been, you know, uh, going on for a little bit now. We've taken a little bit backseat due to Fosdem and other things going on. Um, but it seems like we've got a good place to work from. Uh, and like I said, Basil has a sponsor and it's just going to need some hammering out. We've also got a couple of um, sponsor questions at the moment. I think uh, Oracle, we still have, uh, they've stopped donating. AWS um, has not donated to Jenkins in a while, but have time before they're going to get removed. So um, there may be some shifting of the sponsors on the page, but for the most part, um, CloudBees is an anchor or like the highest level due to the amount of uh, support they're offering Jenkins. Um, others are going to be mirrors because it's a different kind of sponsorship than providing money, providing other services, stuff like that. So it will be uh, relative, but um, it's going to be within the the ideal scale of like how much support is Jenkins receiving. So um, yeah, it'll, it'll be a nice little uh, page and like presentation once we get that sorted out. Uh, next up, so this was a pull request that's been getting a lot more attention and uh, comments on it in the last um, week or so, or in the last uh, few days. So um, Sridhar has been working on creating a new 404 page that lists related pages. Um, they've done a lot of work. They've been working with uh, Chris and uh, Gavin Mogan has been uh, assisting and providing feedback and suggestions. Um, a lot of folks are helping out with this to improve the hopefully improve the 404 page so that it's not that's a, so that's a little bit more uh, usable or uh, just provide some insights for the user when they're looking for something on Jenkins.io uh, whether it's related sites or providing the search contents that they were looking for in the first place so um, really great to see here love the work and the back and forth that's happening between various people within the community uh, thanks to again Gavin thanks to you Chris for helping out uh, for Jibnix, uh, for them helping out, for everyone. Just, uh, yeah, this is great. And it's nice to see a new contributor uh, embracing the community like that and uh, the community embracing them back. So, uh, yeah, just wanted to throw it out there. If anyone wants to review, provide some insight as well, by all means, um, it's welcome. Uh, and then next up on the agenda, so we have the upgrading Jenkins section. Um, we started this discussion last week, and essentially, uh, Vandy has uh, had submitted a pull request uh, last year for adding an upgrading Jenkins section. Um, it's a great start. There's a lot of good stuff there. However, there are a lot of nuances and particulars when it comes to Jenkins and how someone might have installed it or be using it that are not necessarily... Uh, accounted for. And it's one of those things that it's hard to account for if you're not really aware of what other people might be using. So uh, it's probably going to be a bit more involved in terms of what the content looks like, how we organize it, um, and what kind of instructions are provided. Um, again, it's going to depend on how someone set it up, whether they're using Mac versus Linux versus Windows versus something else, if they're using Yum versus Brew versus App. Like there's a lot of pieces to it that have to be considered. So um, I would love to have that discussion going forward and maybe talk about some of that stuff here. If anyone has any op opinions or uh, ideas one way or the other, welcome to it. Um, but yeah, not something that we have to do right this second, no worries there. Um, and then the last thing, uh, the last note I have here, this housekeeping note. So uh, FOSDEM is gonna be uh, the second, third, and fourth, so starting next Friday. However, uh, both Mark and myself will be traveling for FOSDEM. Um, so Doc's office hours next week will be canceled for both uh, EU and US and uh, Asia. So uh, that will only be next week though. Um, once FOSDEM's over, everything will get back to normal after that. Um, and so, yeah, just really excited about Fostum. That's all. Um, yeah, that covers the agenda I had for today. Does anyone else have anything they want to discuss, talk about, throw on the agenda? 
Kevin, I had one item that I, I yeah. wanted to borrow. Chris, while he's here, or yeah. Chris, while you're here, Chris, are you okay if if we cancel Doc's Office Hours Asia that's scheduled to start in eight or 10 hours? Yeah. Okay. The, 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 thank you, Chris. The, the preference there is uh, that way I can reduce the number of hours I'm working today. It's very lazy of me, but I admit it. Okay. Thanks, Chris. And thank you very much for being up at all hours of the night to join this session. Much appreciated. Always. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, Chris, uh, please go get some sleep after this. You, uh, you deserve to rest and relax as well. So, um, yeah, that covers everything for today. Video, uh, the recording will be up in about 40, 24, 48 hours. Uh, and then we'll see you in two weeks. Until then, take care. If you're coming to Fostum, stop by the Jenkins booth. We'll be there. Uh, and we look forward to seeing everyone at the conference and the con summit. Thank you very much and take care. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.